Hello everyone, welcome back to another round of Duty Mock interview series. I am Jose, I will be your host for today. And today I will be interviewing Marcos for the role of an experienced React.js developer. And just to give you a heads up, the question that you'll be seeing today might not be the same that you get if you come for an interview with Turing because we selected this question for YouTube purpose. Okay, as that said, let's get started. Hello, Marco, and how is your day doing so far? Hey, Jose. It's a pleasure to be, to be here. Day's been great, and yours? I'm getting there, pretty much sure. I'm doing great. Okay, thanks for asking, and I'll be there. I'll be there, I promise you. So, uh, okay, so I would like to get started this meeting, ask you to introduce yourself, okay? And tell me a little bit about your background, okay? Your professional experience, then I'll take from there. Okay, sure. So my name is Marco, I'm from Brazil, Rio, and I've been a professional software developer for six years now. Uh, I'm experienced in both the front end and the back end. For the front end, uh, React to JS, Next to JS, and for the backend, Node.js and GraphQL. I mainly code in TypeScript. And for the professional background, I worked before on a plastics industry uh, where I developed an entire system for them. And now I work on a car auto refinancing company in the US, thanks to Turing. Nice, really great. Okay, and to start our meeting today, okay. I'd like to ask you, uh, what is new in React.js 18? Okay, so what is new in React.js 18 is like concurrency, uh, automatic batching, transitions, suspense on the server. I can explain these concepts later. Use AG, use transition, use deferred value, some, some new hooks, uh, and some also new APIs, create root, hydrate root, in the strict mode, and yeah, th these are some things that are new in React Engine. Nice. All right. And so let's suppose you have application in, in between React.js, of course, that's use React.js in 17. Okay. Uh, if they want to obligate to use React.js 18, what are the steps they need to follow? Okay. So if you want to upgrade to use React.js 18, the steps you need to follow is uh, change the index.js or index.ts file. Uh, previously, you have like react-dom.render. Now you have react create root and then root.render. These are the main difference uh, from React 17 to React 18, if you want to start using it. Nice. Nice. In your previous answer, you mentioned automatic batching uh, transitions. Okay, a few new features in VectorS 18. Uh, what is automatic batching? Okay, so automatic uh, batching is like previously React already did some batching, but uh, it didn't batch set states or 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 this kind of stuff. Uh, when they run in event handlers, for example, in promises. Mm -hmm. So now in React 18, React 18 this, uh, batches the set states and all, all these operations automatically, even if they are called from promises and this kind of stuff. This is automatic batching. Okay, you're saying that previously, if you use a uh, set timeout or promising, it will not be updating batch, and now it is, right? Exactly, yeah, set timeouts, promises, event callbacks, they, 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 those are all now batched. Nice, and we're gonna back, get back that later in this video, in case, keep, keep tuning. So, what are transitions, okay, and how are transitions different from the bouncing or set timeout that you mentioned in your previous answer? Okay. So what are transitions and how transitions are different from debouncing or set timeout? Transitions is a new feature on React 18 that um, takes a very heavy computational operation 
and reserves it to a lower priority queue so it doesn't freeze your screen. So for example, if you have an operation that takes too long to execute, previously React would freeze your screen and until this operation finishes. So now with transitions, uh, it moves it to a lower priority queue and executes it whenever it thinks it can execute it, part by part. It's different from set timeout, for example, because set timeout would execute this operation all at once after some time. But uh, transitions, no. Transitions reserves it to a lower pro priority queue, queue and executes part of these operations whenever your React uh, is using less computational effort. Got you. Uh, let's see me if I, I, I got that, okay? Let, let me see if I got that, okay? Uh, as JavaScript has uh, the call stack, the micro text in the test, okay, the micro test. So uh, now React.js has something similar to that, right? And when you use transitions, it will not block your render, it will be executed later, uh, whenever uh, React.js wants to, or is free to execute that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's partly right. That's uh -huh. almost all right, but it doesn't execute all at once. It executes okay. part got you, got you. It adds a free space. Got you. And the difference between the set timeout is with set timeout, you can set up a timer, and with transitions, you cannot do that. For example, set timeout, you can set up, I want to execute this code after one second, after two seconds, after 10 milliseconds. And with transitions, React.js will take care of that, right? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, cool. Next question. What is uh, suspense on the server? Okay, so what is suspense on the server uh, is like, it comes uh, from Next.js, which is a framework based on React, but React didn't have this functional functionality back when mm -hmm. Next.js appeared. So now React.js 18 is starting to, uh, to add this functionality. Uh, it, it's like a server-side rendering. So uh, suspense on the server. React had suspense before, but not on the server. So now React uh, 18 can server-side your content, can load your content before on the server, and then display on screen and then send to the client. Okay, got you. And if you use it correctly, you can, uh, you also has a few components that you don't need to load. Uh, in the, the first load of the page, you can set up uh, it to load after, right? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, all right. Well, let's go back to the beginning. I, I'll say the core of React.js, okay? What is reconciliation? So what is reconciliation? Reconciliation is uh, React compares the actual DOM, the actual page and, and, and everything uh, to a possibly different one. And if it's different, if it requires an update, it updates the DOM. So, Reconciliation is this comparison between the dynamics. Okay, all right. And there's a few things that we can do to help React.js to improve in this diff algorithm. Give you an example, okay? Uh, if you have a list of uh, users, for example, then you have a map or a for loop. In, in this for loop, uh, for each of, uh, in that case, you will write uh, LE with many users, so mm -hmm. you have to add uh, a key, okay, as a prop, and then pass a, a unique identifier for that. Because if you repeat that key, okay, that identifier, uh, if you need to delete one user or add a new user or change a user, React.js will update the, the wrong uh, part of the screen, okay? Exactly. So yeah. keep in mind, if you are in a, in a loop, uh, don't forget to add the key props, okay, to help RecJS with this if algorithm, with, with this reconciliation. Okay, cool. What are higher components? Okay, so 
hierarchy components or HOCs is a function or a component that takes another component as input and returns a third component. Uh, it's important to know that it's a pure function, so it doesn't modify the component that it received as, as parameter. Uh, it helps with reusability, so you can uh, declare some higher components and, and then just pass different components to it, so it helps with reusability in that sense. Um, and yeah, that 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 and the higher components adds functionality to it. The most famous case is React Redux with Connect, for example. But now with hooks, uh, higher components are, are less used. Gotcha. And another uh, common uh, higher components uh, are T router, right? That matches one context with a component and inject props on it. Right, and yeah. you can reuse the same logic with different components. That's why uh, I, I mean the benefits of using higher components. So if you use a uh, router, you reuse the same component, the same higher function route, okay, to pass uh, props to different components. Did you get that? This is the key mm -hmm. of uh, higher components. Mm -hmm. And what else? Let's see. And you mentioned hooks, okay. What are similar to higher components uh, uh, with React hooks? Yeah, mainly reusability. You can create your own hooks and these hooks can inject into your components behaviors and, and, and things that higher components would also do. So that, that's why hooks are mm -hmm. more used now or more frequent now. Custom hooks, you mean, right? Yeah, the hooks, the React hooks, yeah. Okay, custom hooks, yeah. custom hooks, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they are similar. All right, in terms of performance, okay, uh, could you please name a few techniques to optimize React app performance? Okay, so to improve the performance of your React app, there are a lot of techniques, uh, but some of them, is react.memo that memoizes an entire component. But if you don't want to memoize an entire component, uh, you can use use memo or use callback that are hooks uh, specifically designed to improve performance because it uh, stores the content that it passed to it and it survives renderings. It only renders when needed. So if you just uh, declare a variable inside your component, it will reload every time it re-renders. But if you use memo, it doesn't. Same thing with function. So you have used callback. Another, another thing that we can also mention to improve performance of React application is lazy loading, uh, where you can load your component only when the screen is loaded or when this part of the screen is loaded, for example. All right, cool. All right, so what's the what's the key architecture difference between React.js and Angular? Okay, so the key architecture difference between React.js and Angular, uh, first of all, my favorite, my favorite one because I don't like Angular, uh, is that React uh, helps. React Angular is very uh, close. Uh, it, it's a full framework, and you have to follow all the conventions that they ask you to. And React JS is more like you, you have more freedom. But the main architecture difference is that React uses virtual DOM, virtual DOM and one-way data binding, while Angular uses a real done and two-way data binding. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, I'm not asking you what's two-way data binding because this is for Angular interview, okay? All right, so, um, okay, before before my next question, I'd like to call upon our React.js fellow here, and I mean, not only the React ones, but 
uh, for all developers that has three plus years of experience and are content with the, their tech stack. Okay. So if you have three plus years of experience and you are confident with the QSS that you possess, okay, head on turing.com slash jobs and apply for the job that is more suitable for your tech stack. Okay, and then uh, once you pass in the vetting process, I'm 100% sure that we will get a job as we did. Okay, and going back to our interview today, um, Marco, why re renders happen? Okay, and how do you prevent re rendering in React.js? Okay, so in React, re renders happen, and how I can prevent them? Uh, because props or state has changed. So whenever the props or the state of a component change, it will re-render it. Uh, you can prevent re-rendering or unnecessary re-rendering. Back in the time when we use classes, you had a method called should component update. Uh, but nowadays we these we rarely use classes anymore. But you have to pay attention to re-rendering components that are not updated. So for example, when you update um, part, when your update affects only one component of your application, just make sure that only these components getting updated and not the whole tree. Uh, you can use the hooks that I've already mentioned, like uh, use callback, use memo to also prevent re-rendering. This also prevents re-rendering. And they use ref never renders the tree. Nice, nice. Okay, as that said, uh, that was my last question. Okay, that's a wrap. I don't have any more question for you. I would pass you if you come to my interview, if you give me this answer, I would pass you for sure. Okay, and before we finish, I just would like to thank you, Marco, for this uh, amazing uh, experience. Okay, I'm pretty much sure that our developer here like that as much as I did. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to Turing. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoy this content. Okay, comment down below. Or, uh, what do you feel about the question? If you answer this question in a different way, and let me know if you had experience with ReactJS 18 and what features are you using. You can give me an example. I love to to see that in the comments. Okay, uh, don't forget to subscribe to Turing.com. Go on Turing.com. Let's job. Uh, find the job that's most suitable to your tech stack and apply for it, okay? As that's that, that's a real wrap. Thank you all for watching this video. Thank you, Marco, again, and I hope to see you again in further future. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one.